J'adore les post-it. <laughs> I love post-it notes. I love post-it notes so much that if I had one right now, I would say, voulez-vous coucher avec moi? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love post-it notes so much that I bought stock in 3M just to support post-it notes. Uh, and it turns out they have a lot of interesting uses. So you can use them to decorate your office, you can use them for sunscreen, <laughs> you can use them for the most awesome winter is coming Game of Thrones party. <laughs> You could use them to teach someone a lesson who parks in a handicapped space they shouldn't have parked in. And apparently you can even use them for cheese. <laughs> so a few years ago, I was at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas in the United States, the interactive film and music festival. And 3M was there and they were giving out these massive post-it notes. These ones are bigger than the size of a human head. And I had never seen these before, so I was really excited. So I took a lot of them, like a lot. Uh, and I'm with a friend and we're carrying them, trying to figure out what we're gonna do with them. And we walk over to a, a bar uh, and we sit down and we find a, a great spot that's looking outside on this beautiful day. And we're just sitting outside watching people as they go across. And we're thinking like, what do we wanna do with these post-it notes? And almost as a joke, we just scribbled on one of them, free problem solving, hashtag zero problems, put the post-it note out on the table, and then as people are walking down the street, we're just yelling at them, hey, do you need any problem solved? Free problem solving, business, life, horseback riding, welding, you name it, we'll solve your problem. And so this is us at our free problem solving stand. Uh, and at first, there's like a guy who's like asking a question about his shirt, uh, and then this girl asks a question about her relationship. But then there's this person, I'll never forget, this girl in this pink shirt, she's like, can I solve problems with you? And we're like, sure. So she's solving problems with us. Then all of a sudden, all these people are tweeting about us. I peer out, and there's like actually a big line now of people to get their problems solved. We have an intern who's like getting us pizza and directing traffic outside. Then this woman from Goodwill, so Goodwill is a, is a secondhand clothing franchise in the US. She's like, how can we grow our brand? And I'm like, how can you not grow your brand? You have like 300 stores. At one store, triple your prices. At one store, offer gift wrapping. At one store, offer recycling services. At one store, offer co-working space. And she's furiously scribbling down all these notes. She's like, can you come do like a workshop with us to help us get more ideas? I'm like, I just gave you 10 ideas. Go do those, and then maybe we can do a workshop. Uh, and I remember thinking how crazy it was that people seemed to be much more interested in collecting ideas than actually doing anything with them. Uh, and so we're doing this for a few hours, uh, and we decide to leave. Uh, and then this crazy thing of, like, we actually walked back two hours later, and the problem-solving stand was still going on with other people, which is just kind of crazy. So that afternoon, we could have done anything we wanted with those post-it notes, or we could have just sat there and done nothing at all. But we exercise this bias towards action to say, just hey, let's just try something uh, and see what happens. And it ended up being this pretty cool result. So up until that point in my life, um, I was kind of this idea magnet. I was uh, always talking to people about ideas, generating ideas, also a TEDx organizer, so we bring people together to talk about ideas. Uh, and I would find myself in a lot of rooms like this, right, filled with people with big smiles and lots of post-it notes. And as someone who loves post-it notes, you would think I would be happy about this. But I started to reflect on it and thought, you know, how many times have I been in one of these rooms filled with post-it notes? And then a week later, like, thinking, what the heck ever happened to any of this stuff? Uh, and so I started to study the science of action and what really either sparks people to act or holds people back from acting. And what we found is that most people, for most ideas, either don't do anything with it, or will slowly make a little bit of progress over time. But people who are incredibly action-oriented, they take these massive surges of action right away, where they take a massive amount of action right away and surge forward on an idea. So I wanted to study this a little bit more and started looking at all kinds of stories. I mean, if you look at my browser history, you'll find a lot of weird stuff there. Uh, everything from a guy who got a job from a Snapchat filter to someone who made this Spanish Bible app to someone who made a restaurant in China out of an old 737 jet, all kinds of stuff. But I want to share with you three of the primary lessons that we learned uh, in doing this research. So one, action is a muscle. So much like some people exercise their biceps, right? Not me, but some people. Uh, you can exercise these action muscles. So think of it like playing a musical instrument. Who here plays a musical instrument? 
So the first time, if you were to sit down and try a piano for the first time, right, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus to think about what notes you're playing and make sure you're playing the right notes. But the more you practice it and the more you get used to it, it becomes this muscle memory, right, where you don't have to think about it. It's the same thing with action. I'll give you an example of a guy who has huge action muscles, like huge, believe me. Um, so uh, it's a guy, he's at this pool party, right? And at this pool party, there's a bunch of these white dove pool rafts. And he's like, oh, this is really cool. He's like, I wonder if there's a pink flamingo version of these. And so he Googles it and it doesn't exist. And for most people, they would just kind of let it be there. But he decides, you know what, I'm just gonna Google China manufacturer, get on the phone with somebody like, hey, China, uh, can you design this like pink flamingo raft? I want it to be this big, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Six weeks later, this thing shows up at his house. He has a pool party with it. Everyone falls in love with this thing, and he launches giantflamingo.com, where he's made absurd amounts of money selling these pink flamingo rafts because he just exercises that muscle so much that it was, it was natural for him to do that. So first is that action is a muscle. The second thing is that it tends to be, when we have an idea we're really passionate about, an idea that we think can be great, we always say like, oh, I wanna set aside time later to sort that out, right? Like, oh, I'm gonna set aside time when the sun is shining and I have the right energy, inshallah, where I'm gonna be able to make this happen, right? But what happens, <laughs> what happens is a week passes, a month passes, inshallah, inshallah, and we don't actually take action on our ideas. And so we need to commit to taking action right away on things. So I was sitting with my friend Matt, the one from the free problem solving stand about a year later, and he was saying to me, you know, someday I wanna take over like a summer camp and do some kind of adult summer camp. And I just said to him, okay, get out your phone, Google summer camp, pick one and reserve it. And within minutes we had booked a camp. And it sounds simple because it is, but we do this to ourselves all the time, right? Where we make it some bigger thing than it is and we wait versus just taking action right away. So we ended up having this cool camp. Okay, third thing is that it's actually, when we have an idea ourselves, it's actually really hard to come up with actions for our own ideas. But when it's somebody else's idea, it's really easy to be like, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, right? Like think back to that Goodwill woman of all the different things. Uh, and so the key is, is setting yourself up to make sure that you're getting that feedback from others. So a good example of that was actually at the camp that we ended up organizing. We decided to call it Action Camp. Uh, and we brought together a bunch of really cool people um, to learn from each other, have fun, and take action on an idea. And so one of our friends at camp, her name is Christy, she had a great job at a great company, um, but in that environment she decided to share, like, yeah, maybe someday, like long into the future, uh, I want to start a flower shop, and that's something that I might want to do. And so we did this process which we call action storming, which is generating actions for other people's ideas. And through that action storming process, came up for, with some very specific items for her, like think about what venues uh, currently are reserving weddings, or document for the next 30 days events that could be enhanced with flowers, whatever they are. And she decided that over the next month, she would start taking action on some of these things. And as she did that, she was realizing like, wow, maybe this flower shop doesn't have to be something in you know, such a far distant future. And within a few months, she actually had quit her job and started this flower shop. If you ever find yourself in Fargo, North Dakota, you can check out this flower shop. It's called Love Always Floral, it's a beautiful place. But the point of all of those is that everything in life that's hard is just a series of things that are easy. You just have to take that first step, right? And your idea could be the next Nobel Prize or it could be the next pool toy. But the point is taking that responsibility for yourself and committing to yourself to say, I'm gonna take action and I'm gonna make it happen. Merci. Mm -hmm.